Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor and welcome to another tutorial today. And this is about creating a horror or a grungy style post processing profile to suit your horror game or an atmospheric game. And you can use this to take advantage of lots of different post processing. So you can fit many styles. And I'll explain as we go along. And you can use, see in the background, I'm using the Finwood Studios Atmospheric House. And I've just set a post processing profile with some grunge so you can take a look at what happens. Be sure to check down in the description for all the links and savings to all the best sales in game dev. And be sure to check out my Patreon if you want to get access to over 160 different scripts, assets, and projects. So I'm just going to give you a few pointers today to get started. This also is very dependent on how your scene looks in terms of lighting and textures, and it often works better with PBR related materials. But one thing you've got to remember usually is when you do it, you need to make sure that you're using the linear color space. So you can go to edit, you can go to project settings, and if you go to player, you need to make sure that the color space is on linear if you're using any of the rendering pipelines, because it makes the color space much more dynamic. And if you do need to import post processing, you can go to window, package manager, and then from package manager, you need to make sure that you're on Unity registry, type in post, and then you can install the post processing package straight into Unity. I've got a camera and you need to have a post processing layer on your camera. I usually give that a specific layer of PP for post processing, and I'll set that up here if I need to. You can use anti-aliasing if you want, but then what we need to do is create another empty game object just down here. You can call it whatever you want, but I've just called it post processing volume. Then you want to add a post processing volume component to that. So then we can add different effects. So you can see my one currently here, but what we can do is we can just remove it and you can see that the house looks like this just without any post processing at all. And it can still look atmospheric based on the actual lighting, but post processing goes a long, long way. So what we could do is press new and then from there it's created a new post processing profile. We'll just call this tutorial profile. And then what I like to do is add a new effect, choose unity. I'll usually like to start off with ambient occlusion. And then I usually like to have the mode on the scalable ambient obscurance. And then you can set the intensity and you can knock it up. So you don't want to overdo ambient occlusion, but you want it to add depth to the recessed areas. So you get a little bit of that context shadowing. So then you can see that it puts it all around the edges of our scene. Then we can go to add another one. I usually like to add auto exposure. We can add bloom. You can add chromatic aberration, but I'm not a big fan. Color gradings are important. Depth of field if you want. Grain can be important if you want an overall look of a graininess over the screen. Lens distortion if you want to create a very specific lens effect. Motion blur if you want to blur when you have motion. Screens place reflections if you want to make reflections that are in the scene. So obviously if you have more reflective surfaces, floors, walls, it's going to be more impactful. And also then you can have a vignette. I like to just Select the vignette because it's quite easy to do. We want the mode on classic. You can change the color. I usually like to just set the intensity and set that up. So we just have a darkening of the area very slightly, makes it more intimate. Then from there, screen space reflections, you can set this to whatever you want, but as you adjust the settings, it will make it more performance hungry. So it will eat up your performance. But when we tick it and untick it, we do get slightly higher look of the reflections. Auto exposure, I think this is a good one. I like to set the minimum maximum luminance that can ever be in a scene. So I usually like the minimum to be about 2.6 so it darkens the whole scene and then I'll usually have the maximum to about a setting of 9. And you can enable filtering and I usually like to make the filtering much much smaller and take it towards the end and you just get a very subtle effect. But I think one of the biggest things that you can add is colour grading. So you can set the mode to a HDR if you're using that sort of colour space and make sure it's on linear to get the advantages out of that. You can put tone mapping on the ACES preset and it does make it very, very dark because ACES does a quite a good job of neutralizing all the colors. So if we take make that as none and we put ACES, it does bring out a lot of contrast in our scene. Realistically, we could keep our scene like this because it looks a lot more grungy like it is now, but you can have auto exposure to darken it. But what we can do is add our post exposure on our color grading to about one and we bring up the look. We can add some contrast to our scene if you wish and you can add that to about five. You can add a sort of gamma lift if you tick the little gamma box and you can achieve a very subtle offset color based on if you want it to look more red, more green, brown, sometimes a bit greeny. 
looks a little bit more horror in many ways. And then we can also affect the bloom. So we can have the intensity and the threshold. So what we can do is set the intensity to about two and then the threshold, you can mess around with it. So you could take it down or leave it up. So we'll take that 0.3, something like that. So as you can see, when I enable or disable it, we get that effect to make the light source brighter. You can increase the intensity if you want. I sometimes like to add a texture here and we can set the intensity also. So I can just add a grunge texture to make the overall look be more dirty. And if we increase the intensity, you can see these the grunge being added to the screen. Obviously you don't want it that high. You can keep it on about 0.5 and you have a very subtle effect. You also want to make sure that as you increase the intensity of the dirtiness, it will increase the intensity of the overall look of the bloomed object. And then if we start walking around in our scene here, we can look at lights and we'll get that look of, you can just about see the grunge maybe on the uh, video. You can see that the darkness in the areas, especially when it's dark within the game. And even when we go upstairs and you can see more reflective areas with the lights, we get much, much more atmosphere based on what we want to create. And you can adjust anything based on the settings that you use and you can make a completely different look, whether you have it in the day, in the night and create a more of an atmospheric effect. And now just as another example, this is the exact same post processing, but this building looks far, far more grungier and does have more reflective surfaces. And it has exactly the same post processing profile on it. It just means that based on, because we've got more reflections, more lighting, more dirtiness, generally, we can bring out that really grungy looking darkness, that sort of horrific effect. So do let me know what you think of this tutorial because I'd love to hear some of your thoughts, tips, tricks, and if you've got any ways to make it look more impactful just using post-processing primarily, do check out my Patreon to get access to over 160 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And do be sure to come and check out all my great assets on the Unity Asset Store and on my website for awesome savings. So a big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Steiner, Hoagland Nygan, Raheem Whitaker, Jean Pommy, Manos Berakas, Terence Conrad, Walter Dunson, Joseph Newman, Rene Leisure, Tova Chambers, Kreshnik Halili, Alex Shen, Alyssa Fade, Daniel Getterjank, Ishkawa Takuya, Ron J. Hush, Thomas Marsaleski, Nafkaton, Kyle Trunick, and Callum Murray. Thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.